Welcome back to another video where I biff my way through dumb challenges so you don't have to. Today, I'm going to beat the entirety of Tears of the Kingdom, which means all dungeons and bosses, using the worst weapon in the game. You may be asking yourself, what is the worst weapon in the game? You're probably thinking of things like a stick, a torch, or maybe even a soup ladle, but it's actually the Decayed Master Sword, which you get in the very beginning, which does a whopping one damage. Now you're probably wondering how I'm going to use that for the whole game since it gets taken away from you once you complete the great sky island we'll just say it's magic just in case nintendo's watching anyways i set a few rules for myself that i must abide by for the entirety of the run which i'll show on screen now right now let's let the suffering begin this is definitely going to be one of the challenges of all time zelda let me do what i gotta do freaking stopping me every five seconds to look at rocks we've made it to the beginning of the beginning uh here's our trusty weapon we'll be using for every single boss in the game we're gonna speed on past this part because it was quite boring as you probably already know i'm just doing all the tutorial shrines and stuff i picked up some things i thought i'd need on my journey along the way like the archaic warm greaves which would come in handy for the wind temple mostly everything went smoothly but there were a few challenges challenges I faced that I wasn't expecting. For example, the few shrine wants you to use a bow to shoot some leaves with a fire fruit to get the small chest down, but that was pretty easy to get around like that anyways after i completed all the shrines i was finally able to make my way down to the surface and this is where the real journey began yes sir there we go still gonna try using the wing oh my god that was close i swore i saw like people oh whatever we should be able to make it in this water still ideally i rule kingdom we made it now we'll just grab the paraglider real quick and we'll be on our way now before we go and get the paraglider. I do need to grab something real quick. Topaz. Now, you'll see why I need it in a second. There we go. We got the paraglider. I'm gonna knock out the wind temple first because it is objectively the easiest one. Oh, it worked. I did it. Holy crap. Okay, you just gotta be really quick with it. Now, I'm doing this because I wanna be able to have the snow gear in the Rito region uh, so I don't have to worry about cooking meals and crap, you know? Plus, like, if there's anything else we need to buy with rupees, we're not gonna have to worry about farming farming anything. All right, that should be enough for now, I would think. And with that, I was ready to start making my way to Rito Village. Getting there was fairly quick. Yeah! And I did fight a few enemies, which gave me a pretty good taste of how this run was going to play out, but nothing insane yet. When I got there, there was something I encountered that I really hadn't thought about yet. This is as far as you'll be able to go, horsey. Time to make a log bridge. This might take a while, just considering how long it takes to cut trees down with this freaking sword. Okay, this has to be long enough. Let's give it a shot. Perfect. Oh, this is so sketch. These logs are long but thin. Kind of like me. Just slowly but surely. Oh, dear God. This is, this is terrifying. Okay, we made it. Anyways, I made it across and began my journey to the top of Hebra Peak. But I ran into yet another problem because, as you may or may not know, the game wants you to shoot an arrow Kuda with a bow to get Tulin's bow back, which obviously I can't do. So I had to get a little creative with my strategy. Epic. We got our first Sage ability. Now, this is going to be a little tricky because I don't have a bow and nor can i use one how exactly am i gonna do this <laughs> shit i did not think this through we're gonna have to wait for him to get close and then try and hit him oh that was so close okay let me save just in case dude that went right through him am i tripping dude i that went right through him or maybe oh wait i have another idea we're gonna have to use our topaz but honestly if it's what we have to do it's what we have to do Yes! Okay, that worked. Thank God. You know, that topaz wasn't technically a weapon, so I did not break a rule. Things got pretty chaotic as I made my way up to the wind simple, but I totally did not die. No, dude! Totally. A couple of trampoline bounces later, and I was ready to tackle my first dungeon in the run. That wasn't so bad. We only died once. Not ideal. Bro, we're in the middle of a battle. One thing at a time. Thanks, Tulin. Thanks. One fan down. Dude. What? Could use some help, Tulin. Come on, knock him off the edge. You're hitting him the wrong way. Knock him off the edge. Yeah. Boom. Two fans down. I need to throw something at one of these icicles. There we go. 
What the piss? Oh my god. All right, three fans down, two to go. There's four. Alrighty. Oh god. Uh, no, 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 no. No! The final fan. Finally. There we go. All right. So, Colgara, arguably the easiest boss in this game. So, I don't expect there to be too much trouble. But then again, honestly, you never know. Yeah. Yeah. What? Shit. Hope we, we can get there in time. Um. Uh, what? That didn't even touch me. Oh, f off, bro. Yeah, okay. All right, I'm gonna try something different. Gonna wait for him to shoot all of his things off. So yeah, he just kind of sits there for a little while. Jesus. Okay, we still need to be kind of quick. There we go. All right, we can do it all again. We just need to do it all again while dodging the tornadoes. Come on. Let's go, dude! Yes, sir! That should not have taken me that long, but we did it. It doesn't matter. I think I was just trying to go too fast before, and I wasn't taking my time. But when I took my time, it was freaking easy. One temple down, three to go. Well, four, technically. Next on the list was the fire temple, and oh boy, did I have some fun in store for me. I made my way to the Elden region, reminded Yonobo who the alpha was. I am now the alpha. Which, apparently, it doesn't matter what weapon you use, they all do the same damage. Encountered some perfectly normal and intended AI behavior. Uh, this game's acting weird, man. And was finally ready to make the journey up Death Mountain. To Death Mountain we go. Alright, so we need to make it up to that shrine. What's the fastest way to get up there? Let's see how far up this gets me. If we can just ascend up the whole mountain, that would be amazing, but I kind of have my doubts. That's a good ways up. I'll take it. Oh, I'm not gonna make it, am I? Oh, we did it. Oh, wait. No, no, no. Stay here. Stay, here. stay right there. Just stay right here. Just stay right here, Link. God. Okay, thank the Lord. Okay, that was actually really easy. I'll take it. It was time to tackle the beast that was waiting for me, and that includes both the fire temple and the boss. My brain wasn't operating at optimal performance, we'll say, so some questionable things happened. Come. Ow, what the fudge? Well, that wasn't ideal, was it? Dude. Why is that a thing? Oh, Jesus Christ. What? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, man, that could have ended very badly. But with all that said and done and all five gongs run, I was ready... I was ready to take on Marbled Goma. This was my first real taste of the pain I was going to endure for the next 24 hours. The mechanics of the fight went just about how you'd expect them to. Break the legs with Yonobo and then run in for damage. Which, as you can probably see on screen right now, I wasn't even making a dent into its health. That's until I figured out I could just recall the explosive rocks right back at the boss. Which did help a tiny bit, but I was still in for a long ride. For the next 45-ish minutes, it was just break legs, hit eye, recall rocks, and repeat. Even though this comes nowhere close to the bosses later on in the run, at the time, it still felt like an eternity. But with persistence, hard work, and dedication, I was able to kill the boss. Yes, dude! Oh my god! God, dude, I I think I spent an hour on that boss fight. I'm not even joking. I think that literally took an hour. Holy crap, dude. I was like, okay, maybe 30 minutes, but an hour? I'll have to check how long it actually was when I edit, but my God, that was insane. First try, at least. First try. I mean, all right. Well, that's two temples down, three to go. Next stop, Zora's Domain. You know, we are about seven hours in, but I still think we're making, like, pretty good progress for that amount of time. Am I gonna be able to climb up this? It looks a bit high for me. Gotta get creative sometimes. But in all honesty, this is probably gonna take longer than it would to just run around and do it the right way, but I'm, I'm too invested now. I don't care. All right, now the moment of truth. We just gotta have faith. We can do this. Oh, so, dude. Dude, we're literally right there. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, we might have done it. Look at this. We can regen stamina. What is his link? 
Look at his leg. Boom, we made it up. Let's go. Freaking sweet. All right, we've basically arrived at Zora's domain. Yeah, we're gonna skip a lot of this since it adds nothing to the video. I was basically just doing chores for the Zora, like washing a statue covered in sludge with water. Real interesting how literal water people couldn't figure that one out. Anyways, I completely forgot I'd need a bow to shoot one of the king's scales through the teardrop in the sky. And yes, I did try just throwing it, but it did not work. I was then met with this cool little mini boss that I had totally had tons of fun with sludge leg this is like the most anticlimactic mini boss i've ever seen but that just means it's that much easier to kill um i hope what why does everything one tap me a blob of mud got shot at me and it killed me in one hit link the same person that killed calamity get you know what it's fine help me out side on I'm not doing it. Oh, God, dude. This is gonna be a whole... Okay. Uh, help me out, boys. Yes. Help me out, please. I'm doing absolutely no damage. Yes. Do that damage, boys. Let's speed this up, please. Good job. Good job. Good job. Let's just keep doing what we're doing. Deal that damage. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We got this. Holy crap. That was really good. One more good damage phase, and I think we're in the clear here. Come on. Yeah, let's go. If I didn't have the help from the other sages, that would have taken a ridiculous amount of time. Moving on, I did some more chores and eventually made it into the water temple. Activated a water wheel here. Activated a water wheel there. Saw the light dragon for whatever reason. What the... Why? What just happened? You guys saw that too, right? Why did the light dragon just spawn right there? Uh, you know what? I'm not going to ask questions. Don't know if that's normal or if my game was just having a stroke, but uh, yeah. Anyways, it was then time to take on the boss that, for whatever reason, I wanted to strangle the most. A lot of this fight was similar to how you'd normally do it. Splash some water on the boss, close the distance and get some damage in, and then repeat until the second phase. This was the easy part. The first phase only took me like 10 minutes each time because the sages were actually able to provide some help. It did still have its own challenge to it though, since any attack would basically just one-tap me. Anyways, I got pretty consistent with the first phase, but the second phase was an absolute absolute nightmare trying not to get one tapped trying to get my aim with the water consistent but most of all the damage phase for one just hitting the thing with water was super hard because it likes jumping around like a crackhead but even then doing damage was a chore since there was so much more mud it meant my sages got stuck and weren't able to offer that much help meaning that i had to solely rely on chipping away at the boss's health little by little but after 30 minutes of raging i finally killed this absolute joke of a boss which took another 30 minutes total let's fucking go oh my god dude my armpits are sweating so bad that was easily the worst one yet it may not have taken as long as the fire temple boss but my god it felt like dragging your nuts through fucking nails thank you thank you lord holy shit i hate that boss i actually hate that boss i'm so glad we're done with it we did it we saved zora's domain we've completed three out of five temples we are over halfway now you know we're only ten and a half hours in now then the one that i am honestly extremely scared for is queen gibdo yeah i don't know we'll cross that bridge when we get there let's just start heading to gerudo desert right so as i made my way to gerudo desert i did a little research on how i could kill queen gibdo without using Reju's ability. I basically needed to do some sort of elemental damage without it doing a ton of damage by itself. I ended up accepting the fact that I was gonna need to use Dazzle Fruit to, I guess, melt its skin. I don't really know what the term is, but I felt comfortable with that option since it basically did zero damage, meaning that I'd either have to rely on using the Sage abilities or my trusty one damage sword. We'll talk about it a bit more when I get there, though. I found myself a Dazzle Fruit and used my handy dandy little dupe glitch because time is of the essence and began the quest line to be able to get to the lightning temple. Yes, I did have to use a bow for that little training segment you have to do with Riju when you first meet her, as well as for knocking down the Gibdo hives. There really wasn't any other choice since I did try throwing stuff, but the game fully expects you to use a bow for all of this. Anyways, the Gibdos proved to be a bit more of a challenge than I had anticipated, both at Karakar Bazaar and Gerudo Town. I had zero help from the sages, and the guards decided they'd just take a quick little nap in the sand. So it was all up to me. As you probably guessed, I just had to throw the dazzle fruit at them and chip away at their health little by little. It also didn't help that at the bazaar, Riju just wanted to stand there and do absolutely nothing. So she got pretty close to death. I also ran out of dazzle fruits like midway through.
through, so it took even longer. Skipping past all the crap, I did the rest of my chores like a good boy and made my way to the Lightning Temple, where I got my first taste of the Queen Gibdo fight. Right, I am preparing myself for the worst experience of this run so far. Lord have mercy, this is gonna suck. Luckily, we have Sidon with us, so we'll have that little, uh, one-hit invincibility thing. This is gonna take so many Dazzle Fruits. Look at it changing directions, you little cup. Get them, boys. Oh, look at all that damage I do. Wow, it's amazing. All right. Any little hit from this guy is going to absolutely wreck us. I think if we hit him in the ass, we'll be fine. I love how the, none of the sages are doing shit. Yeah, I was expecting that. The sages are not helping me one bit, and I was really betting on the fact that they would. Sidon, stop fucking running away from me, you dumb prick. Dude, fuck off. <laughs> You're our only hope, Goro. Sidon is goddamn useless. Oh, shit! Oh my god. Surely we're almost done, right? Dude, even the Sage abilities do, like, literally no damage, so it's, like, really not a whole lot different. No way we have to get him to half health. Okay, there we go. Now we have access to the Lightning Temple, at the very least. Nothing too exciting happened in the temple, but it's when I got to the boss that things started to get interesting. I will admit, I do regret not trying harder on this boss, and I ended up cheesing it. I tried using my original strategy with the Dazzle Fruit, but was also forced to only use the Sage abilities since I couldn't get the boss to stun. Attempt after attempt went by, and in all honesty, I was starting to get fed up with the challenge. So after a while, I just said screw it. I whipped out my stack of sapphires and just started blasting. I still feel guilty about this, but at the time, I just wanted to get to Ganon already. The boss fight with all the fails included still took about an hour but the sapphires were able to kill her pretty quickly fuck yes dude oh my god oh my god that is the worst boss in the game dude you know yeah talk all the shit you want i had to use sapphires but my god that was still not easy at all it's technically not a weapon the only weapon i use to kill Queen Gibdo technically was that mas broken master sword. Technically. The sages aren't a weapon. Sapphire is not a weapon. They do damage, but they're not weapons. Anyways, enough is enough. Let's get out of here. All right. Gerudo Desert is done. That feels good, dude. I Yeah, this place sucked. It was easily the worst. I'm not going to spend too much on this section of the video since a lot of it was just small quest stuff for the story and not a lot of meaningful combat. I did have to unwillingly do some more shrines to get myself up to 10 hearts just for that part of the quest where on Dragonhead island you have to open that door but that's really all that's important the temple itself was just fetching all of menaru's parts and the boss fight forces you to use the mech so literally nothing different here than what you'd see in a normal playthrough Alright, this is easily the most insane part of the video. Since I'm only able to use my trusty one damage sword for the entirety of the fight, it means that this is going to take a long time. In fact, I did the math beforehand, and if I were to perfectly flurry rush every single attack thrown at me, it's going to take a whopping three hours to complete. That's literally three hours of pure battle. No breaks, no mess ups, no nothing. While I did have the 10 hearts from doing the shrines before, that wasn't gonna be enough. If I was really gonna to commit to doing this there was no way i was gonna get two hours in and then just die so i gathered one of the strongest armor sets in the game that being the soldier set and also made a bunch of gloom restoration food and gathered a bunch of fairies when i say gathered i mean duping but that's besides the point i ended up gathering nearly all the resources required to fully upgrade my armor meaning killing lionels for their hooves and guts as well as some henoxes only to realize i needed to do a whole ass quest line to unlock all the great fairies so i I ended up just wasting a bunch of time and only upgraded my armor set once but with my armor food and fairies i was ready to tackle this insanely long boss fight i made my way into the depths and ran past all the enemies and began the demon army fight the demon army fight was really nothing special since i just ran in circles and let the sages do all the killing i did have a very unfortunate accident but the whole fight in itself didn't really take that long so it was whatever now was the part that i was dreading for the entire run so far Ganon.
Like I said, this fight was going to take three hours at least. The first phase was the easiest of them all, since I had pretty much already perfected the timing for all of his attacks, and it really just came down to persistence. Little by little, I chipped away at Ganon's health, and I even set goals for myself throughout this phase. I went letter by letter, meaning I was like, okay, let's just get past the F, then the R, then the O, and so on. This felt like an absolute eternity, but it wasn't even the worst of it by far. 2,500 hits later, I got him down to the second phase. This phase went way quicker though, since the sages were actually able to help deal some damage after they were done with the clones. Plus, the attack patterns were identical to the ones in the first phase, so it was really nothing new. But then came the third phase, the meat and potatoes of this battle. You could probably guess why this phase took so long. In the first and second phase, I was able to get a flurry rush in approximately every 10 seconds. But the third phase slows things down dramatically, since Ganon does those new attacks where if you get hit, it actually completely removes one of your hearts. I completely forgot about this, so my stress and anxiety was through the roof. While I kept getting Ganon's health lower and lower at an extremely slow rate, he started to take a toll on my health as well. I just kept making stupid mistakes, getting hit by some of his attacks which removed my hearts one by one. There was no way I was going to lose this though, at least that's what I kept telling myself. I was already multiple hours into the fight, and if I died now, it would be the ultimate setback. But on my final heart or two, I decided to take a risk. You see, I had all those fairies stocked up from before. I really wasn't sure what would happen if Ganon took away my last heart, if the fairy would still revive me, or if I would just die. So I did the unthinkable and tried killing myself in some of his gloom. To my surprise, this actually worked, and the fairy revived me back up to five hearts. This was my one-way ticket to beating the boss fight. So, with newfound determination and dedication, I relentlessly kept wailing away and chipped down Ganon's health little by little. And after about three and a half hours, I finally got what I really made this video for. Victory. Let's go. Oh my god, let's go. Holy shit. We did it. We fucking did it. That took like that what was that? 3 hours, 4 hours. Ridiculous. I'm I'm absolutely drained. I am beyond drained right now. I'm not gonna lie, I was absolutely exhausted at this point. I mean, we were almost 30 hours in, I was sleep deprived, and my eyes felt like they were about to fall out of their sockets. So, I tried killing the demon dragon with just the decayed master sword, but I was just done with it all. I ended up just saying screw it and used the restored master sword to finish it off, but I'm okay with that. I really only cared about getting the main fight behind me, and I accomplished that. And really, there's nothing crazy that would have happened either way. It would have just been me whacking at the eye things over the course of like two and a half hours. And quite frankly, I just wasn't up for that anymore. With all this being said, the run was finally complete and I was able to get some desperately needed rest.